So guys, we always talk about how it's a bad idea to work with a large set of results set. So if you have like a huge table like this example, we have a student grade and there are like what? 12 million students here, right? Even if you add some sort of filters, let's say, hey, give me all the students that got grades between 90 and 100, right? And if you do that, yeah, you have a smaller result set, but it's still, it's a million students. Sometimes there is no option but to work with a larger data set. So if you actually execute select the student ID from grades, and you say, hey, give me all the students, you can do that, definitely, right? So you can say, Good, give me all the student IDs that got, uh, results from 90 to 100 and you can definitely do that but good luck executing that query and even if i execute the database is doing a lot of work to pull first of all to do the execution plan to find out which indexes to use right and then after that it does the actual fetching and then it compiles the results and then if you're in another uh, client machine then that transmits that result into the TCP protocol, depends on the database uh, protocol, it will shove that into the network. And that is a lot of work. And then the client have to wait for all the results to come back, right? Obviously I canceled it right here. Once you have all the results in the client, then the client have to have the memory to store all those results. So that is absolutely sometimes impossible to do meet database cursors and i'm gonna talk specifically about server side cursors here so cursors that you create on the database it says hey database please i'm about to fetch this result but don't give me the result right now create a cursor and then once you create that cursor i'm gonna ask you to fetch results from that cursor and only when i do that you go and do the work follow your plan a, a query your do your index only scan or your bitmap index scan or whatever uh, uh, full table scan if you didn't have any indexes and then go and fetch those rows for me and then return just the ones I asked for how do we do that let's explain how to do that it's very very simple first of all cursors have to be to work within a transaction so we can do a begin transaction or just begin that does a transaction and then you can say declare cursor C as type cursor for select star I just let's say I'm interested in the ID from grades where the grade is between uh, 90 and 100 and then when you do that it says hey I declare the cursor it's good to go you saw that it didn't actually execute the query technically it just came up with the map it came up with the plan to actually plan this uh, query. However, it didn't yet execute it. So now if I do fetch C, that act will fetch the first row based on the query plan that have taken place. So if I do that, give me the first row. Fetch C, give me the second row, and so on. You can go all one by one and you can play with this as you want right and you can for example there are many many things that you can do like for example fetch uh, last give me the last entry for this for some reason right and you can give me hey fetch the last entry and then you can see that the database is doing more work here say so, okay to fetch the last entry i have to kind of scan through all of that stuff to determine what is the last entry right to, to to pull that last entry sometimes the database have knowledge of how to obtain the last entry in a very efficient manner sometimes it actually doesn't right and that's when uh, and that's when an index backward scan versus an index scan uh, become really really useful so guys what is the advantages and disadvantages what is the pros of uh, cursors so the beauty of cursors is you save on memory in the client side at least in your backend application that connects to the database right so if you if you have an, a spin up on a python application or javascript or go application you want you want to process a lot of results but you want to do them piecemeal you want to work with them slowly you can do a, open a cursor and then start pulling a number of rows like say 100 and let's start working with those 100 
and then go move to the next one and then do whatever you want with the 100 right so you obviously and then discard the memory for the 100 and then fetch the next ones right so it definitely saves a lot of memory especially in the client side right <laughs> otherwise you cannot pull 100 million rows in the memory right that's why i always get confused of these questions in interviews like hey uh, sort this array and uh, i don't know it has like a 1 billion row it's like what why would where did a billion row came into my memory to sort them? That's a bad idea, essentially, right? So I always like ask the interviewer back. It's like, okay, where are these actual values stored? Are they in a database somewhere? Are they? In, uh, did they came up from thin air? <laughs> of course not, right? So if I can sort them while I pulling them up, that's probably a be better idea, right? Then pull all of them in memory and then sort them in memory. So. Be careful from these questions. You can you can essentially flip the interview to the on the interviewer when you when you when you know what you're talking about. So, oh, the second pros is uh, streaming, guys. Right? Streaming is a good idea, right? When you want to pull the rows, and as you continue pulling the rows, you can stream them to another WebSocket connection. You can stream to a bunch of gRPC connection, and you can just continue pulling values right it can also be canceled right you can they easily cancel a cursor and the beauty of this is like hey i'm you know i i know i'm, I'm about to pull a million row but i only worked with a hundred thousand i'm good cancel that query uh, roll back i'm good now go move on so canceling is a good thing paging is another good idea right you can page with cursors however We'll, we'll learn that it's actually, it's not as easy to page in a web application with cursors because cursors is stateful, we'll come to that. Also can be used in a store procedure to write uh, PLSQL programming language, fully fledged programming languages with cursors. All right, so how about talking about the counts? What's bad about this? The bad about this is uh, it's actually, essentially stateful, right? But when it's a stateful, that means there is a memory space allocated for it in the database so and and there is a corresponding transaction that points to that cursor that means if you made another request to another server to another process that that process has no idea of your cursor you cannot share cursors essentially because that's that's just the property of the transaction so statefulness is a double edged sword sometimes it's an advantage sometimes it is an advantage if you want to horizontally scale obviously right you cannot horizontally scale you can do some tricks with proxies if you know what you're doing if you're savage devop engineer you can you can make your web application understand that there is a cursor involved and send some sort of a variable that will stick you back to the not only to the same server but to the same transaction however that is extremely difficult to pull up right once if you really wanted to do that and you can do paging with that approach ooh, that is much much better way of the current compared to the current paging that we do which is essentially a stateless paging every request is goes onto another server and that server uh does the query again which is painful to the database it's an insult to the database to execute the same query twice execute it once and then loop through it with a cursor that's even better but sometimes we cannot obviously uh, uh, sometimes it doesn't work that way another cons is long-running transactions guys <laughs> cursors if you want to um, iterate through a cursor you have to do it through a transaction and that means your transaction is going to be running for a long time and transactions running for a long time is is not a good idea for the databases that databases cannot do indexing properly if uh, uh, you cannot do ddl on the table if someone is connected uh, you, right you, you essentially stop people from doing normal work some some write operations can be stopped by long-running transactions if you have acquired certain shared lock, right? All right, guys, that's it for me today. That was uh, the pros and cons of database cursors demonstrated in Postgres. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, y'all.